Hello, today we're continuing the RCO A to Z of the organ with the letter B. And of course, if you're thinking about the organ and the letter B, then there's one composer who instantly springs to mind, and that is J.S. Bach. We're going to look at three slightly different pieces today that you might not have come across before. And the first of these is the Canzona in D minor. Now this is a piece that dates back to 1714 and one of the things I love about it is we know that in 1714 Bach had a manuscript copy of Frescobaldi's Fiori Musicale and he was so proud of it that he inscribed his name and the date on the copy. So we know that he studied this music and he played this music. The Fiori Musicale is a collection of Frescobaldi's canzonas. So these were pieces with distinct imitative sections in contrasting rhythms and metres, but with related themes, and those sections were then separated by chordal adagios. What's fascinating is we look at Bach's canzona and it follows a very similar structure. So we start with a theme in duple time. Descending chromatic bass line. So then if we fast forward to the end of the section, we get this chordal adagio. Taking us into a triple time section. So there you go, they're quite similar in terms of the structure, and in fact some people wonder if Bach actually borrowed from Frescobaldi's fourth canzone. Go and have a look at it and you'll see what we mean. Now the second piece we're going to look at is really very different, Bach's Little Harmonic Labyrinth. It's a piece that starts and ends in C major, but goes quite far away in the middle. Bach uses diminished sevenths and the ambiguity of enharmonic respellings to take us on this very bold harmonic journey. The piece is in three sections, so we've got the introitus, the centrum, and the exitus. And those outer two sections employ the stylus fantasticus, so some people actually wonder if it was a harpsichord piece originally. The middle section is then more strictly contrapuntal. Some people actually wonder, some musicologists wonder if this piece is by Bach at all, or if it's by one of his contemporaries, Johann Heineken. But we have something in the centrum, which is actually the reason that the piece was attributed to Bach in the first place. Have a listen. So it starts with this theme. Fast forward to the end of that section and we hear this. That's B-A-C-H, Bach's musical signature. Now, of course, other composers used it too to reference Bach, but that is what led musicologists to attribute this piece to Bach in the first place. Now, the last piece we're going to look at is a trio movement, and we're all familiar with the six trio sonatas, but this is a standalone movement. Some people wonder if perhaps the outer movements were lost, or indeed if it was a piece written by another composer for three different instruments, and then Bach arranged it for the organ. What's almost more fascinating though is one of the manuscripts lists it as a chorale prelude. Not that unusual, Bach wrote many chorale preludes. But there's no obvious chorale melody throughout the trio. What is there? So have a listen to the beginning of this. three of those parts in the first two bars, three bars, is... Now listen to the beginning of Bach's chorale, Hier lieg ich nun. It's the only musical link between the two pieces, but that melody is the only thing that recurs all the way through the trio. So perhaps that is the movement on which it is based, but who knows? So there you go, three very different pieces of Bach. Go and have a look on RMSLP where you can find all of those scores. Have a playthrough because they're all brilliant pieces.